Um, I'm delighted to have been asked to introduce certain elements of the IBFD yearbook on Taxpayers' Rights 2019. Um, this is the annual product from the Observatory on the Protection of Taxpayers' Rights, and I'd like to take the opportunity to thank um, all of the reporters and everyone involved in preparing the yearbook um, for all um, the efforts that they put in um, and making it such an interesting and useful product. Um, I've been asked to introduce certain elements of the yearbook, and I'm going to focus first of all on certain cross-border elements. In particular, I'd like to focus on um, information contained in the yearbook on exchange of information. One point that we have emphasized throughout um, is the need for safeguards in respect of both the exchange of information on request and also the automatic exchange of information. Um, the uh, dangers involved with the large amounts of data um, has been um, emphasized this year um, and highlighted um, by the hacking of the Bulgarian tax authorities, which took place in June last year. Um, according to reports, um, the data, personal data, of some five million people in Bulgaria was hacked and compromised, and some of that data is said to be available um, on the dark web. Um, there are reports that indicate that that data included information that had been supplied to Bulgaria under various forms of automatic exchange of information. That is an indication of the dangers involved um, if there are not adequate safeguards to the collection and exchange of information. With regard to exchange of information on request, um, we have emphasized the importance of safeguards, uh, many of which rely upon notification to the data subject so that the data subject is able to take action. Without the data subject knowing that there is a request in relation to himself or itself, it's very hard to see how any remedies can be activated if the data is inaccurate um, or um, being wrongly exchanged. Um, in this respect, um, we have um, a number of um, best practices and minimum standards. The best practice is that the taxpayer should be informed that a cross-border request is to be made. Uh, the minimum standard is for the requesting state to notify the taxpayer of a cross-border request for information unless it has specific grounds for considering that this would prejudice the process of investigation. Similarly, the requested state should inform the taxpayer unless it has a reasoned request from the requesting state that the taxpayer should not be informed, again on grounds that it will prejudice the investigation. Developments in this area um, have sadly been largely negative. We start from the position that already um, a minority of countries applied either these minimum standards or best practices. And during the year, there were shifts away from the minimum standard um, in a number of countries by removing the requirement to notify the taxpayer. Um, also, a development that we had noted in previous years was that a number of countries that had previously had quite extensive safeguards, including access to judicial supervision prior to the exchange of information, had removed those procedures under pressure from the OECD Forum on Transparency and Exchange of Information. Um, as part of the peer review process, um, these um, legal procedures had been cut down uh, or removed entirely. And sadly, this has continued in 2019 with China and Luxembourg um, also being added to that list. Um, on the other hand, there were some positive developments in this area, particularly in the EU. Uh, many of those listening will be aware of the Berlioz decision of the Court of Justice of the European Union, um, indicating that in respect of an exchange of information on request, um, a court in the requested country is entitled to examine the grounds for the request and the documents provided, and the taxpayer may also be given um, some access to the documents as well. Uh, that has been followed with um, a subsequent case sometimes referred to as Berlioz II, or the Government of Luxembourg case, presently pending before the European Court, which may add further clarification. We've also noted um, that um, certain tax treaties have um, included measures 
usually in a protocol, adding safeguards for data protection in connection with the exchange of information. Um, a number of countries um, have started adding those measures, um, and that includes not just countries in the European Union. So far as automatic exchange of information is concerned, um, this takes place under a variety of arrangements, including FATCA, the Common Reporting Standard, and the Directive on Administrative Cooperation. The minimum standard we identified in this area was that a state should not be entitled to receive information if it is unable to provide independent, verifiable evidence that it observes high standards of data protection. Um, in this respect, there has again been a negative development with a shift away from the minimum standard in a number of countries. Reporters from those countries um, stated that, so far as they were aware, um, the country exchanged information without being um, assured that the recipient country provided evidence that it observes high standards of protection. Um, one point, though, to note in this area was that after the um, hacking of the Bulgarian revenue authorities mentioned a little earlier, um, exchange of information was suspended with that country, um, which had clearly um, failed to meet the standards of data protection. Let me turn now to a slightly different issue, the one that also involves um, exchange cross-border, and that is the question of mandatory, mandatory disclosure rules and confidentiality. Um, anyone listening to this will be aware um, that um, as a result of BEPS Action 12, um, mandatory disclosure rules are being adopted, for example, in the European Union under so-called DAC 6, or Council Directive, 2018-822. A particular concern has been expressed in this respect, and that is the interference with the confidentiality of the relationship between the taxpayer and the taxpayer's advisors. Um, in this context, um, the um, observatory has highlighted the importance of protecting the confidential relationship with tax advisors. The best practice in this area is the privilege from disclosure should apply to all tax advisors and not simply to lawyers who supply similar advice to lawyers to their clients. Information imparted in circumstances of confidentiality should be privileged from disclosure. Um, in this respect, it's interesting to note that there have been moves in both directions. Um, in some countries, there has been a shift towards the best practice by recognizing that confidentiality extends not just to lawyers but to other advisors. On the other hand, the reporters from some countries indicated that the uh, movement had been in the opposite uh, direction. Overall, um, the observatory emphasizes that um, extensive powers given to tax authorities require clear and effective safeguards. The observatory is focused on identifying best practice and minimum standards to safeguard the taxpayer's rights. Um, and uh, the issues of uh, cross-border exchange and of uh, confidentiality have highlighted these points. Um, several people have been predicting that within the next year, there may be a massive data breach. Um, and the question arises as to whether that may involve tax authorities and what the consequences may be. Finally, um, a slide that, with which you may be familiar. This gives further information about the observatory, and we hope that you found the information in it um, uh, useful, um, particularly uh, the information about developments in 2019. And I end by finally thanking once again all those involved in preparing the 2019 report. Thank you very much indeed. Mm -hmm.